YouTube as it going the Godows is back with the Philadelphia Eagles preview a team that people have a qu big question about will that team at the end of last year carry over to this year I think some people think so they can't get that what happened at the end of last year out of their minds but I don't know who that team was you know do, or do they get back on track of being that legit contender Philadelphia Eagles I mean if you evaluate this team on paper they're good. This roster is too damn talented, and they have potential to be a juggernaut with the talent they have, but they have to show it on the field. We'll break it down here in a second. You can check out the playlist on our channel with all the teams that we have done in this series. You see down here, these are the only three teams we have left. I decided to do the Bucks next, then the Super Bowl champion Chiefs, and then we'll do my team at the end, the Vikings. Uh, so hopefully you join us for all this content. We have a lot more content to get to uh, before the season starts. It's not too long away. we got a top 100 uh, voted by the fans, Bruins, so I'm excited. Uh, but number three, what to watch for the Eagles. How about the DB alignment and rotation? You know, that was a big struggle for them at the end of last year when their defense was awful, really. But specifically, what was the worst about it? I thought the secondary. The secondary was really struggling. But the Advic Fangio, I mean, there was a, really a big struggle with the with the, the new coordinators last year. Uh, you know, Sean Desai wasn't doing a great job, obviously. But he had his chances in the past, and that didn't really work out. So it wasn't really a complete shocker, but they bring in Vic Fangio now, and it, it it's going to be better. It, it's it's pretty hard to imagine it's going to be as, as bad as the coaching was, especially on defense, uh, as it was last year. So I think that'll help it, but they've added to this DB room as well. Two high-end rookies in Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeGene, which I'm excited about. Mitchell could be a really good corner, a good playmaking corner, obviously with the right traits. Uh, he does maybe need to get just more reps, I guess. Doesn't really necessarily need to get better. He could be good at it in man coverage and in press, is what I was about to say. Not a lot of press reps, reps at Toledo, uh, but a really, really good zone co cover corner, which we'll see a lot of in Vic Fangio's defense. I think we'll see a bit of cover three. I think he'll mix it up, though. Um, you know, so he could be good there. Cooper DeGene, who has some good play at, at corner, but. Uh, I watched his tape, and I actually graded him as a safety that I think will play in the slot. Also can get some reps outside, and I was happy, I was very happy when the Eagles drafted him, especially after they already drafted Mitchell because I kind of knew that's what they were going to do. They're going to use him at safety. They're going to use him at the nickel spot. So I'm excited about that. I think he has potential to be defensive rookie of the year. Um, but, I'm yeah, I'm excited to see the alignment. I mean, we can have – because they have Darius Slay, they have James Bradbury. I know those guys are declining a little bit. Bradbury has some reps in the past in the slot. Um, you know, they have Avante Maddox, who they brought back for the nickel spot as well. Uh, they have C.J. Gardner-Johnson, who spent most of his career in the nickel when he played for the Eagles a couple years ago. He moved around quite a bit. We saw him at free, saw him at strong, saw him in the slot. Uh, you know, Blanket Chip's obviously a safety as well. Sidney Brown got some reps last year. Keely Ringo, a corner from Georgia a year ago, has a ton of upside. Uh, they have Eli Ricks in there too. But they have a number of guys that can play, but there's a few guys I mentioned there that – maybe could move around a bit. So I'm very curious about the different looks. I think it's a positive thing. You're going to throw different looks, different alignments, um, you know, to, to these teams. And, you know, when they watch them on film, it's like they could be in this look, they can be in that, like look like that. It's very difficult to, for opposing offenses to kind of pin down, like nail it. Like this is what this look means. And like, you know, so they got so many varieties of different, ways uh, you know different looks they can throw at opposing offenses I love that I love that when teams have that ability to do that sometimes teams try to do it but they just do not have the personnel and the Eagles built it where they have the personnel so I'm um, yeah I'm just cu curious about yeah the rotation the snaps and how they will align um I you know Cooper DeGene's a big one for that I'm very curious uh CJ Gardner Johnson as well um he for the first time in his career he was able to play uh, his NFL career, he was able to play like multiple spots, but that was under Jonathan Gannon. You know, he's not there, obviously. So, will will you know how will he be playing different spots? Will they use him most? So, uh, very curious. But overall, I think it's a positive that you can throw so many different things at an opposing offense. That's huge uh, in terms of the game plan factor. Uh, number two, yeah, just the defensive adjustments this year going from last year. I mean, that defense at the end of the year was so bad. I cannot believe how bad it was because they have so much talent on that defense. It was just so poorly coached, and they're trying to switch defensive coordinators. Um, the secondary was giving up a lot of cushion, a lot of, you know, a lot of separation, I should say, pretty early on. It gave the defensive front, which is extremely talented on paper, 
uh, really no chance. Like, they were still talented. Uh, they just really had no chance to rush the passer. The ball was coming out so quick that it was a major issue. Uh, so they, they for sure have talent up front on the defense, across the defensive line. Uh, linebacker play should be a little bit better. Is it going to be great? No, but that's really not going to make or break a team. But it definitely should be better with Vic Fangio in there alone. But the guys that they have added, you know, Devin White's been hot and cold um, throughout his career, but the talent is inside him, you know, somewhere for sure. I mean, the year the Bucks won the Super Bowl, like he, I felt like he was the best defensive player that I saw the last, you know, down the stretch of the regular season into the playoffs. So that it's got to be in there somewhere. In the secondary, we talked about they've added players, guys like Darius Slay. I mean, still have to be able to play. You know, so, and then, um, but yeah, the adjustments, like, it almost feels like a scheme adjustment as well. Uh, it's the reason they, you know, kind of moved on from some guys, but then also brought in guys like Bryce Huff, who is, yeah, more of a stand-up uh, pass rusher off the edge. So it could be more of that, you know, what Vic Fangio's defenses look like throughout his career, more of like a 3-4 look. But I think it's going to be a multiple defense. I think we'll see a different alignments, different looks, uh, and that's kind of the way the era today's NFL, like where, where defenses are heading, where the league is heading. Um, so yeah, I'm just curious to see how that like, you know, adjusts. Is there like a learning curve? Um, they gotta be better than last year. It's, it's, it's too talented on paper to really ever struggle. Um, but I would imagine because there's a lot of new pieces and new, new, uh, defensive coordinator, Vic Fangio, I think it gets better as the year goes on, which is good because last year it got worse as the year went on as teams started to figure them out. But I think as they'll, they'll start to kind of get their groove and really lock in to this new defense, I think they'll get better and they'll get better at the right time, um, going into the playoffs, you know, trying to win that division, trying to get the best possible seed and then, you know, being in the playoffs It was the opposite last year, but yeah, very curious on, on the adjustments here. But, yeah, it's tough because you want, like, how the defense looked two years ago, and it's very difficult to replicate that, um, you know. So it is a lot different still than, than it was two years ago, even though it's got to be better than it was last year in terms of talent on the, how the talent plays on the field and, and, the, and the coaching. It ha- I mean, it has to be. There's no way it could be any worse than that, um, you know, based on how talented they are. So I guess something to get excited about, but something we're all watching. And the number one, something to really get excited about, uh, that run game is going to be elite. With Saquon Barkley, that offensive line, um, Jalen Hurts, how physical, like their mentality, like uh, you know the type of players they have as well. They will be physical. They will punch you in the mouth, and they, they will make you feel every bit of it, and they will be elite on the ground. They were already kind of there no matter what running back they had, but now you add an elite running back as long as he's healthy. Um, in the, It's crazy because they made Miles Sanders look good. Uh, not, I'm not going to say that made it sound like I think he's awful, but he's not doing too well with the, with the one year with the Panthers. But I kind of knew it. You know, I evaluate Miles Sanders, you know, coming out of Penn State throughout his career. I, I thought he's a tad bit overrated. I really did, but still a good running back. And I really thought it was more of the Eagles scheme than it was Miles Sanders, even though he did a phenomenal job that year. Uh, and that got him paid. Eagles really weren't worried about bringing him back. And they kind of turned DeAndre Swift into that guy we thought he would be. And it just still it felt like the scheme. And now you get a guy that we know does not need a scheme. We know is a, as long as he's healthy, he's a legit running back. He's played with some bad teams, with some bad offense lines. And he's still a bad, bad man. And now he is with that Eagles run game, that Eagles system that has made average guys Swift is above average, so don't get me wrong there. But average or just above average guys are a little, a little more than that. Look great. Now they got a great guy in there. Um, so that that's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. But teams are teams are going to game plan for the Eagles, and they're going to be going like, all right, we this run game like during the game, like the the watching film during that process. They're going to be so focused on the run game. Like, we have to do this. We have to watch, you know, misdirection. We have to watch um, Hurts keeping the ball off, Hurts scrambling, Hurts running this way, Barkley, you know, his ability, even his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. They have to be so focused uh, on beating the run and beating the underneath, like, the, you know, that Eagles game that they're, they, they are known for that it got elevated even more that – that alone is going to elevate an already really good passing game. I know it took a kind of a dip down last year. Still a very good passing game with Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, some of the best in football. Devontae Smith's only getting better. Dallas Goddard, you know, they have a number of guys here, obviously, that can play uh, behind an offensive line that's obviously very good, not just we talk about run blocking but pass protecting. So 
Um, it's going to be very difficult to stop the Eagles. So as, and I already knew the Eagles, all of us knew they had a really good roster. It's a, it's going to be a good team. And I kind of figured they wouldn't, they wouldn't let what happened at the end of last year happen again. But that, that kind of was stuck in my mind as well as a lot of people out there that like, it's, it's a little bold to predict them. Like if you want to predict them, go back to the Super Bowl. It might be a little, it feels a little bold because like, what if that team continues I just think it's unlikely, and the more I uh, more that I evaluate this team, I'm like, this team is really good. Like they have to be really, really good. I mean, they are going to be a pain in the ass to deal with, and it could be on both sides of the ball. You know, because how good the defensive line is, and again, the different looks they can give with the secondary, and then offensively, because it's an elite run game, they can also throw the ball. They can hit you with that home run play at any given time so this team has a chance to be very very special so maybe I'm a little higher on them which we were already kind of high um, I was leaning on them winning the division I'm on a roll with picking the division winner in the NFC East too so um, I picked the Eagles two years ago picked the Cowboys last year uh, I'm leaning towards the Eagles this year the Cowboys could be a little sneaky if you want to watch their video um, that is up uh, players to watch Jalen Carter I mean this guy could be elite right now and we saw the flashes last year but if he's on the field, and he's going to get more playing time, of course. That's kind of the Eagles has had so many guys that could play up front that they weren't really worried about throwing a rookie in there. And he played quite a bit of snaps. You want to play him that many snaps because he's good. But um, if you look at the snap counts, you know, there's some games where he's playing like 50%, 60% snaps. You actually want that to go up, obviously, because how good of a player he could be. Uh, but now, obviously, he's going to take another step up and in his second year it's just kind of the Eagles way he's ready to go so he's going to play a lot more reps he's going to continue to get better we could be talking about this guy like during the year not like after the year like during the year that this guy's an elite defensive tackle so um very it's a guy to watch very excited to watch him grow uh and how special how good he can be because the best defensive tackles in, in the game even with Aaron Donald God you think about Chris Jones Dexter Lawrence Jeffrey Simmons guys like this like they Quinn and Williams like these guys are complete game changers. If you have a guy like that, they are com- they can make your whole defense way better. You know, just that one player. So the Eagles definitely very well should have one here. Let's see that and act in action. You know, with the other players that they have this year, uh, and then kind of already touched about it, touched on it, but I got to put Saquon Barkley on here just because how good of a running back he is, and he's going into his you know first contract off. Uh, the rookie deal. I know they adjusted at the end, you know, going into the season last year, but so technically I guess this is the third one, but um, yeah, just seeing him when he's like entering his prime and which is scary. And then he's been on some, we talked about, it, he's been on some bad giants team, some really bad offensive lines. And then he's been on some good, you know, two years ago, good giants team, uh, but r- really bad offensive lines. Now he's going to the best or maybe second best top two, whoever you want to say it. Uh, offensive lines in football where a team's got a fear of Hurts running. You know, they, again, they got a fear of him going one way. They got to keep a guy spying him and they got to fear the passing game. Like, how how much damage could this guy do? The answer is an absurd amount. So, all eyes on that. Very, very curious. I'm going to go with the new pass rusher, Bryce Huff, number one. Very curious. Very curious. They brought him in because they love his upside, they, they think he could be something special. They liked his production, obviously, last year. Everyone did. And they think he fits Vic Fangio's defense more than an Hassan Reddick or, you know, uh, you know the type of players they were bringing in before. So this is kind of their edge piece right now and for the future. So curious about all that. But where I'm very curious is he was super productive for the Jets last year, right? Good defense, and that's how he got his contract. But he was actually a backup. He was a rotational piece. So I think some people go like, Wow, like he was a rotational guy, like a high-end rotational guy in terms of snaps, and he got that many sacks, like that much production. What is he going to do as a starter? And that is a pretty solid point, but I think sometimes what people fail to realize is that, you know, and he did have really good players ahead of him, but yeah, they did kind of worry about his run defense. He was more of just a passing down specialist when it was an obvious passing situation where somebody's going to get after the quarterback with all those talented guys on there. So how is he actually going to be as a starter? How is he in the run game? Because when you're a starter, you have to, even as an edge rusher, you have to be productive stopping the run. So this is kind of like a boomer bust free agent, but at the same time, not like this year. So if he like didn't get as much, many sacks or wasn't as productive and if he struggled against the run this year, it wouldn't be like bust, like it was a bust signing. 
Some people will probably say that because he's still young and still learning to be a starter. So um, you definitely give him time. But I am very curious how he's going to translate, how he translates, kind of how he transitions over to being a starter in a different defense. Um, and I do think he has tremendous upside. Uh, and he has a really good players around him still. So, I, you know, going from the Jets to the Eagles. So, very, just very curious in general. And it's, it's an important spot. It's an, he's a little bit of pressure, though, at the same time because he's got really good players around him. They they brought him in to be the guy. Like, they, they, they kind of switched their scheme and kind of focused on Bryce Huff being the leader of, you know, not a leader of the defense, but a leader of that edge group for now in the future. So, and he's got talent around him. So, there is a little bit of pressure to produce to show up, you know, so very, very curious. Uh, games to watch, there was a lot of them. Again, I don't do divisional games for this because it's obvious. Obviously, the Cowboys games are massive. Um, you know, Saquon Barkley versus the Giants will be huge. But I wanted the Bucks in week four. I always talk about it first three weeks, sometimes four. There's some weird weird things go on, and the, kind of the, the league, the season kind of kicks into gear week four around that range. And they're playing the Bucks, the team that kind of ended their season. So, it will kind of be a good learning experience. Like, where are we compared to just at the end of last year? Same for the Bucks in week four in Tampa. So that, um, you know, the Bucks are going to come out and try to expose what they exposed in the playoff game last year. So that, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that is. And then the Doug Peterson game in week nine against the Jags. The Jags could be a very solid team. Obviously, I think people are sleeping on them as well. Um, you know, two, two really solid teams. I'm just very curious how the game plan is because there's people in the Eagles organization and on the field that ver- definitely know Doug Peterson's offense. Doug Peterson knows what Jalen Hurts and that offense is all about. Um, so very curious of how the game plan works for both those teams and how they show up on game day. Uh, the Bengals games in week eight, I like that one as well because if they're, you know, there's still a question of the secondary for the Eagles, even though I do think it's a lot better. But the Beng- the the Eagles, that is, but the Bengals really attack through the air, obviously. So could they give them problems? Uh, but I do think the Eagles could try to out physical them with their offense. So that I almost put the Bengals one on here, but I had to put the Ravens game. Kind of a heavyweight battle in Week 13. Two teams with running quarterbacks. They're more than just running quarterbacks, but that's where their strengths are at and where they throw other teams' game plans off and you know pre-snap really throw them off. So that'll be and they both. Both those teams' philosophy is, hey, let's get in there. We're gonna, we want to run the ball a lot, but we want to punch the other team in the mouth. We want to be faster, stronger, more physical in them. That's kind of both these teams' philosophy. So in Baltimore Week 13, that's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun to watch that matchup. And then some fan stakes. <clears throat> Antronaut coordinator improvement. I mean, yeah, it's, it's got to be stepped up. Is it going to be Ste- uh, Steichen and Gannon? No. I mean, some people are probably hoping that Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio is going to be that or better. I... I you know, I, I don't even if the Eagles somehow like if they win the Super Bowl, which is possible, which is possible. You know, even if they do, I don't even know if that. Still, I would be saying it's better. You know, maybe just the players are better. There's so much talent on that team, but um, it's definitely got to be a lot better than it was last year. It has to be. Offense staying consistent down the stretch. Um, yeah, got to be a little more consistent. Got to be able to close out the games. Um, hurts to take further step in the passing game. Uh, yeah, could grow a little bit this year. Obviously, we're waiting. That's another big question. Does does he do it? Because he is a good passer, but can he be, you know, even almost felt like he took a little bit of a step down last year. So does he get back on track? Saquon's ability to take over games, aiding the pass. Yeah, it's, it's we talked about that, but even the other way too, like not just what I said earlier, like the runs can open the pass, but the pass can open the run. It's like you know, you can win games with just the run. You can win games with just the pass. It's kind of a scary thought for opposing teams. Uh, Devin White with Vic Fangio's defense. Yeah, usually it's like an old school linebacker fits Fangio's defense. Maybe that's why, you know, Devin White could be that guy. Um, in kind of the league kind of is going away from Devin White with the Bucks were. They were playing a guy like KJ Britt a little more. Um, you know, so d- does he kind of get back on track? Carter and Davis, you know, the Georgia duo. Yeah, how about Jordan Davis? I never got to talk about like that guy could be scary good. Um, that's going to be fun to watch. The Georgia duo on the inside there. A lot of Georgia guys. Uh, Nolan Smith, does he step up off the edge? Guy that, does he have the play strength? Can he stay, does, is he durable enough? Some questions with him. And then Mitchell and Dejean, which we touched on, the two rookies can make a big impact. Um, Mitchell and his playmaking ability at corner and Dejean playing multiple spots and kind of just being a uh, a problem. Like, uh, you know, what's going on with that guy? Offenses are going to be doing pre-snap. Uh, from Adam, can Hurts prove he wasn't a one-hit wonder? I definitely think so. I mean, he was good enough last year where you're not going to what 
you're not saying he was a one-hit wonder, but he was a lot better the year before, so I understand the point. Uh, as a Cowboys fan, I like Hurts a lot, but he's got to show he can play like he did in 2022. And that's the big question. It was... Is the game plan kind of out? There's always, a, there's always a game, a better game plan as time goes on for everybody, for everybody. You know, there more. It's just common sense. There's more time there is, the more time, more film there is on these guys. There's more learning experience for coaching staffs and players, learning how players play. There's always more of a game plan. But the great ones, like Patrick Mahomes, like there's there's more of a game plan for him. But he's just too good, where he's just better than no matter what the game plan is. So Ken Hurts be that guy is kind of what the question is there. Uh, best run game in the NFL, it's definitely got to be there. We know the the Ravens are always up there because Lamar, the Lions are definitely really good. There's definitely uh, you know a few that could be up there, but I, I definitely, uh, you know, my money would be leaning towards the Eagles right now. Can Moore prove he's great uh, like some people think he is? I never thought he was good when he was in Dallas. Yeah, I thought he was going to be better when he was with the Chargers. I, I was not thrilled um, it almost looks like I, you know, maybe he takes a little bit too much, uh, ripping when it comes to play calling. I, I, I have a lot of problems with play callers around the league. I don't really have a major, is it great? No, it's definitely not great, but I don't have a major problem with his play calling. I, when I watch, I don't think his players are prepared. Like he's got really good players in Dallas and Chargers and, and with the Chargers. So Dallas and LA, uh, but they, there's times where like really good players are like you know little laws and having to do things on their own, which is okay. You hope they can do that, but um, it, it didn't really to me. That's I, don't know, I think I was talking about a lot last year. It's really when I realized like yes, it seems like a fact. It almost yeah, it just seemed like they they didn't watch for specifics on their opponent. They kind of just went out there and just did their thing. They just it was all about them, like how they're gonna play, kind of stick to our guns, and it didn't you didn't adjust things when preparing for the team, like, you know, on what they do specifically, it was kind of just, we're going to do the exact same thing every week. We're not, and they look like they weren't ready for, you know, for a blitz, for an example, like that was actually a big thing. It's like they, the offensive line never saw a blitz. It just looked like they didn't prepare or kind of look for things that teams did, you know? So that's, that's kind of my main question with him, but there's just so much talent here on this team and things like that, like specifically the offensive line, just, uh, preparing and understanding I, I wouldn't imagine it's that much of a issue because the, the Eagles offensive line how, how it is already and the veterans that they have so we'll see yeah Nolan Smith breakout year yeah a little pressure there you know see if he can kind of get going um, again play strength needed to improve from the last year at Georgia and he needed to be a little more durable so I I knew he was talented but I had some questions with that so um, I guess we'll learn a little bit more this year on that potential top 10 secondary with how many good young players they have um yeah top 10 might be tough but they do have some really good players and again they can really throw teams off the different looks they give uh possibly Knicks last year if he doesn't have postseason success yeah that's actually a good question like if they don't make the playoffs they don't make the playoffs I think they have a clean house um I mean not the front office but in terms of the complete staff I think they clean house um and but if they make the playoffs and lose right away uh, it could be as well. It could be, you know, it's a pretty good question depending on different scenarios. Take 13 and four record hurts, throws 20 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. So a lot of interceptions there, but, uh, AJ gets AJ Brown gets 1500 yards. Um, Devonte gets, uh, 1100 yards. Oh, Saquon Barkley. That's a Super Bowl. uh, rushes for 1300. So some specific, specific stats there. Uh, GB one, two, one, nine. My concern will be the Will the defense improve this year? Seems like on paper it will, but you will never know. It's kind of what we discussed too. Like what happened at the end of last year is kind of in the back of our minds here. Plus, how long do you think it will take for us to get with two new coordinators? Um, uh, will we? I it's, it's a really small. I'm struggling to read. Will we be fine, or as I expect, will there be hiccups? Okay, so. Yeah, I mean, I think you're at. He's asking, like, how long does it take until yeah the two new coordinators work? Like, are they gonna have to like redo it like after next year, or do they get really it's a tough part in the NFL with the coordinators? They like if they're bad, you got to find new ones, and you got to learn something new. But if they're good, they get hired somewhere else. I know there's a few teams like Tennessee was kind of getting hammered with that with the offense coordinator, like 
every time they found a good one, it was like, he's gone, he's gone. Um, you know, LaFleur, Arthur Smith. So, um, yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky, but yeah, that is Kellen Moore's like boomer bust. Um, he could be around for one year or not. And the big fan Joe is like, I think we think he's solid, but how, how long does he have with his career? So are they going to be looking for new ones? But it's definitely gotta be a lot better than, than this year. Um, I think there'll be hiccups early. I think they're really going to click at the end of the year, which I think they're prepared for. Then they kind of built, um, they, they kind of built it that way. Last year was the opposite. It just really went downhill at the wrong time. So they're good. They, they know they're good enough to win games. Like even, even pull away games, they kind of get outplayed in and then being able to be prepared for down the stretch of the season, the playoffs. So I think they're kind of built the right way, but really that defense defense has to step up. I think it will. I think it's too talented not to, but Whatever happened at the end of last year cannot show. That, that, that is, uh, that's a nightmare scenario there. Tyson Wilson, I've seen a handful of people in lists say Hurts isn't top 10. To me, that has never been a question. I feel like he's easily top 10. Um, there's just so many good quarterbacks right now. It's tough, and it's like kind of other guys improving, like C.J. Shroud's got to be in there now. That's the problem. You kind of have to think about other quarterbacks like all of a sudden there's new guys being added that top 10. So it kind of pushes somebody out. Is it him? I guess it's debatable. I, I, I like this year is going to be huge for that. Like when uh, deciding a top 10, because CJ Stroud, like does like guys like that, Jordan love, do, do they continue to get better? Uh, Jalen hurts. Does he play more like he did two years ago or last year? Um, you know, so that, you know, the, the, the older guys, you know, Aaron Rodgers, where is he at? You know, because we weren't ranking him last year because he was out. Stafford played out of his mind last year. Does that continue? Does he finally decline? So I think when talking top 10, I think you do have to factor in the other quarterbacks. But if you say in general, does Jalen Hurts play like a top 10 quarterback? You definitely could say like, yeah, he, should, he easily does. Um, but there's, I feel like there's more than 10 guys that, that play like that, if that makes any sense. Watson, Tron, can A.J. Brown, Jalen Hurts connection get back on track? A.J. Brown be a top three receiver yeah it's a big question I know they're really tight so I'm not really worried about like that because they look like they hate each other at times I don't think that's actually the case it's just two competitive dudes that want to be great and they're a little disappointed that they weren't on the path they were the year before um I think they, they it get I, I'm not worried about it I think it's back on track there AJ Brown uh two years ago and through the first half of last year easily looked like a top three receiver at times it's like this is the best i think jefferson was hurt but this is the best in, in football um i definitely think he'd get back on track um but they have more targets to get the ball to too and that's not a bad thing at all like even barkley in the passing game but smith's getting better it's not a bad thing at all but i i'm not worried about i'm not worried about it. some people made a big deal about that and it was it, it's not good if the two guys are kind of arguing and brown's pouting a little bit and hurts is like come on stand up you know Stop putting your head down. Stop getting mad about stuff. Let's just play ball. So I'm on hurt side. For, I'm definitely on Jalen Hurt side for that. Um, so that can't happen. It probably there will probably be signs of frustration at times. But you know, if it's just frustrating and guys like kind of explaining like you know Brown like okay if I do this I'm open that we want that you know you want something like that. So I'm not worried about it really at all. Uh, but yeah, definitely a team to watch this year because they could be a juggernaut or do some of those struggles carry over. I don't, I don't see a scenario where they're that, like they're the same, like that's really bad. They're too good to be like that. But, um, yeah, we'll see. We will see. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. We got just three videos of these left. We'll finish this week and we got some big videos to get to leading up to the season. Of course, I'm getting really excited. Make sure you join us on Twitter to kind of play along or X link pin in the comments for that. And our sponsors, liquid IV, really good stuff. Uh, code goat for percentage off. It's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.